Blog Talk Radio. Hello. Welcome to blogtalkradio.com. You are now online with Andrea. If you would please give us um, a basic history, if you would, um, on neurofeedback and, and what it is and how it works. Well, uh, you know, neurofeedback got its start in in kind of the dark ages uh, of the neurosciences uh, some 40 years ago. Uh, This was before people believed in brain plasticity and so forth. So when these uh, results started, uh, you know, seeing the light of day, uh, people were rightly skeptical. Uh, because they just didn't have a framework in which to put it. So uh, what what started this all off, uh, again, it almost had to happen by accident because uh, nobody at that point in their right mind uh, would uh, design an experiment to prove this out because nobody would have thought this possible. So uh, this technique was actually discovered uh, by accident, and it took a good scientist to kind of notice uh, something's going on here that ought not to be and I need to be paying attention. Uh, what happened was this 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 has to do with our space program. Uh, many years ago uh, our astronauts were actually uh, having problems in space and uh, this was of course a well-kept secret but sometimes those people the, you know our highly trained astronauts were uh, cognitively off. They were reporting stuff that just wasn't wasn't possible. Like uh, one of them was hallucinating uh, seeing natives uh, on uh, on one of the Pacific Islands. Uh, well, you know, there's just there's just no way uh, from from space to be seeing such minute features. So, uh, you know, mission control realized they were in trouble with uh, with their astronauts on the expensive machinery out in space. And uh, and so they scratched their heads and they realized that was what was probably happening is that some toxic rocks, rocket fuel was uh, leaking into the space capsule uh, and uh, uh, getting the astronauts to act funny. So they wanted to study this material. It was already known to be toxic, and th- they studied it in animals, of course, because you can't do this to people. And uh, uh, so it was injected into uh, into cats, and they went into seizure. This is very toxic stuff. Um, but uh, uh, but some of the cats didn't go into seizure. Well, it turns out these were not naive cats. Uh, these are cats that uh, had you know other people had experimented with, and and w- one of the exper- prior experiments was to train these cats uh, to to alter their own brainwave patterns. And uh, and so uh, uh, it turns out what we ended up here with was a perfectly controlled experiment. Here were the cats uh, who weren't trained uh, to ch- to alter their EEG, uh, and and they were do- going into seizure uh, just like on clockwork, just like clockwork. And Not then there were the so other. What, what year was this exactly? Um, uh, this this was uh, in the uh, first half. Of, uh, in the early 60s somewhere. Wow, okay. Yeah, so it's that, it was that long ago. The researcher now had a problem on his hands. He was trying to test this monomethylhydrazine, and, and he was having two, two outcomes instead of one. So uh, at least he had the wits to go back and carefully screen these cats and see what might be different in those two cats, two sets of cats, and then he found out uh, quite clearly uh, the difference lay uh, in in the training they had previously gotten, uh, and that that has set us on the road to this whole uh, to this whole technique. He then dis- studied this in monkeys, and he studied it in human beings. Um, now, uh, you know, you can imagine in those early days, if if he just submitted a proposal to the National Institutes of Health, saying, uh, you know, I'd like to study this this technique in in human epileptics. Uh, they they would just laugh him out of court. So uh, he had to be opportunistic. He, it turns out there was an, uh, a person with epilepsy uh, in his laboratory, mm-hmm. and she volunteered to be the first trainee. Uh, and si- since she was an employee, uh, the usual limits uh, you know didn't apply on human subjects and so forth. So she volunteered, and sure enough, over the course of uh, months to years, she uh, she became seizure free. She got her driver's license back. 
and uh, and uh, you know that that story is still when it's told nowadays is still very very touching. So the very first experiment, human experiment, uh, paid off, and then of course that led to some studies being done, and uh, and all those studies turned out favorable, and they were they were actually published in the mainline journals, epilepsy and so forth. Thank you for tuning in to Blog Talk Radio. You have been online with Andrea. Listen to me live or listen to an archive. Whatever you do, continue to stay connected to online with Andrea on Blog Talk Radio.